I am Optimus Prime, and I send this message to any surviving Autobots taking refuge among the stars. We are here. We are waiting. Man, this has been a weird year for Hollywood. At the time of this recording, there is only 100 days left in this unpredictable year of 2024, which is pretty insane when you think about it. And while it feels like every year is a year that we as a collective audience say, wow, this year has really flown by, or aw man, where did all of the days go, like some kind of cliche Sims dialogue or AI generated bullshit like that. That statement couldn't be farther from that cliche when actually taking a step back not only as an audience member, but from a studio's POV when looking at the Hollywood landscape and box office overall. Man, I just know with that 2025 slate, I just know the champagne bottles have already been purchased in order to put this filler arc of a Hollywood season into their back pockets. Out of sight and out of mind and onto greener pastures. Hopefully for all of our sakes. And while there was a time when the post-pandemic excuse was fair game and somewhat accepted from a majority audience standpoint, there's no really denying that that excuse at this point has become tiresome to hear. And while some of the audience could also point to the 2023 writer strike, well, and the actor strike that was coinciding at the same time, how dare I forget about those blokes, that excuse just kind of screams the lack of self-awareness and unaccountability from an industry that was quite frankly hammered by its own hubris, incompetent decision-making, and blatant disregard and or ignorance for what the audience is actually looking for when it comes to their Hollywood entertainment. Constantly churning out embarrassing flops, reoccurring disappointments, constantly being faced with the many, many scandals off the field, the poor marketing for projects that deserve all of the marketing that they can get, while constantly promoting the shit on a screen most Hollywood studios just hope you'll ingest with no questions asked, the terrible interview sound bites and moments that mostly just end up turning into comic relief, the nonsensical writing from some of the most outlandish writers in the game right now, those same set outlandish and creatively devoid writers that demanded higher salaries while putting out mediocre job performances, character writing that is pretty much shit the bed in comparison to what once was, organized attacks on certain aspects of certain fandoms simply because of a different viewpoint, and the cycle of retaliation that will just continue from now on. But more importantly, it just always goes back to the fact of how our audience and studio relationship is in one of the worst in most dire states in our Hollywood history, and much like with the release, general interest, or I guess I should say disinterest, and unfortunately eventual box office flop that Furiosa Mad Max saga was all the way back in May of our 2024 Hollywood filler art, it's looking as if the newest, newest installment into the Transformers universe in Transformers 1 seems to have purchased a fast pass on the Furiosa Express track, and while the comments of that Furiosa video all the way back then helped me see the vision from a different side of the audience of why they were uninterested in that said idea in that said universe. In my eyes, the potential flop that Transformers 1 is shaping up to become is a little bit more of a head scratcher, but from what I can piece together from either the opinions of my mates, social media, or just my personal perspective, I believe that the lack of direction with this IP is mostly to blame for the lack of success this franchise has faced post the Michael Bay universe, and while the September 27th release in China might give it the international boost this movie so desperately needs before it's thrown into the streaming bargain bin, forgotten forever to the streaming warriors of ungentlemanly warfare and the beekeeper, no matter how you look at it, it is just not a good look. And the worst part is, and I feel like a broken record at this point, Transformers 1 isn't even that bad. And honestly, some of the audience could even go as far as to argue that this installment into the franchise could easily be one of the most enjoyable, entertaining, funny, immersive, and a movie that at least has a clear-cut vision as to how it wants to present itself and a story that they want to lay out going forward. A movie that can actually look me dead in the eyes as an audience member and tell me confidently that a foundation is being laid for a structure that I could or could not be interested in, but there is effort, and in this case, effort that was being displayed on my screen for an otherwise pretty engaging and enjoyable viewing experience. And so while the traditional excuses, or at least one of them, of not having a plan or a vision for this franchise, leading to the questions of how or why the mainstream audience isn't connecting with this franchise post the Bayverse is out of the question, and with the Transformers IP 
already having been a wildly successful blockbuster franchise, not to mention just simply being one of the most successful and recognizable brands that have become household names to ever grace our creative landscape. It's just hard to see as a fan the road to Transformers 1 is becoming because it is just going to be another forgotten flop of a quality movie in a year that has seen so many movies and shows of the same quality fall into the sunken place of failed Hollywood projects. But what are you gonna do? GG's, I guess. Anyway, let's just go in and talk. Yeah, I didn't mention it in that entire soliloquy, but this movie's marketing was terrible. And the reason why I say that is because this yapping session that I'm just gonna call a plot synopsis is going to be pretty short and to the point, seeing how Transformers 1 is just a movie following the origin story of Optimus Prime and Megatron. Nothing more, nothing less. I'm not even just oversimplifying the plot just for the sake of the memes. That is just legitimately the movie. I mean, imagine messing that up in the marketing department. As I mentioned, Transformers 1 follows the rise and, I guess in Megatron's case, the fall of some of the most notable characters in the franchise. I have no idea how we messed this up. But to actually dig into the movie, with the world building of Cybertron finally getting the action that it deserves as its own character, think like the city of Gotham in most of the Batman adaptations, as well as the Transformers lore finally making its way into the main stage, Transformers 1 follows Orion, Pax, and D16 from humble beginnings as mere minor robots. Not like minor robots, Drake just- Probably a minor. <laughs> Forgive me, it was, it was just too easy. Not like minor robots in regards to the story, like actual robots that mine the planet's energon in order to keep the planet sustained. Oh yeah, I might have forgotten to mention that those humble beginnings really meant just being a slave bot. Wait, can I even say that on YouTube? probably gonna get a channel strike on that, but with some of the Transformers born without their core, therefore not having the ability to transform, Transformers society as a whole is split and based on that hierarchical structure, but in an attempt to make a name for themselves as more than just minors, a minor. Okay, sorry, that was the last one. They find themselves being sent down to sub-level 50, kicking off a series of events of new friendships, uncovering conspiracies, shocking plot twists, devastating character betrayals, and setting the Transformers on the path we know the Transformers to be today. And when you wrap all of this up into a gorgeously animated film, and I know I'm just biased to the animated medium in general, but this is not a case of glazing for the sake of glazing, when you wrap up this tightly paced and competently made story into a well-made animated format with some of the best Transformers choreography that we have seen in quite some time, you could tell that in that third act there was like a surplus in the budget or something because my god did they go off and because of that in my eyes you should have a banger or at least a movie that should have its own leg to break even i mentioned a couple of videos back in a passionate video of mine of tired hollywood franchises that would work best as japanese style anime adaptations and the transformers franchise unfortunately made that list mostly because again the lack of direction that this ip has faced post the bayverse but after watching transformers 1 I can easily say that that hurdle in direction and vision is no longer an issue. And what was even a bigger revelation is that I myself am starting to personally question if this franchise works best as a live action franchise. Are the human characters in a Transformers movie an essential element to the story in order to get the casual audience to care about this franchise? Because for a movie that I think checks most, if not all of the checkboxes when it comes to creating a successful origin story, for characters that I would say the majority of moviegoers are aware of, like so many productions that have hit our small and big screens this year in our 2024 Hollywood filler arc, it looks like we as an audience are witnessing just another victim of a movie that is missing the most important checkbox of them all. The box office. So in a ranking tier list that is still a name in progress, man, it's actually been a long time since we've been on the tier list. Man, it has been a slow month in September, I'm not gonna lie. Also, I just didn't go see that James McAvoy movie or Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. I I have never seen the first Beetlejuice, so... Ah, oh, God, I feel like I'm about to get clowned in the comments now. But I will easily be inserting Transformers 1 right up here into an actual movie. It's unfortunate that we live in a time where movies like this just fall under the radar into the streaming bargain bin, and rather that's because of the poor marketing or whatever the case may be. It is just unfortunate nonetheless. And if you haven't seen Transformers 1 yet, I would highly recommend, 
especially if you have chickens. This is definitely a kid-friendly movie if you're looking to get your kids into the franchise. Hopefully they don't get cold feet and just take notes from the Sonic franchise and continue this vision. Prayers up. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll leave a link to my Twitter and letterbox in the description just in case you guys want to go check that out. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that is all the words I got for you today. Bye.